Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management and host of the Resney Wealth Report. We've got a fantastic show for you this uh, morning. Of course, we will be taking your questions. Please send those to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. And make sure you do visit our website, ResneyWealth.com. We've got some upcoming workshops right here in Naples and Fort Myers. Of course, we've got all of our free informational reports that you should definitely read and understand and learn. Uh, too often, we find a lot of investors get bad advice. They're, they're sold investment products that are better for the so-called advisor than for you. It hurts your retirement, it hurts your portfolio. Protect your money. Go to ResneyWealth.com. Don't be sold a bunch of junk. Make sure you do what's right for your portfolio. And as I've always said, the only firm you should ever entrust your money to is a fee-only fiduciary money management firm. And by the way, no bank, no insurance company, no brokerage firm is a fee-only fiduciary money manager. Are you being ripped off? Simple question, folks. Is someone actually managing your wealth or are you just being sold investments? The sad fact is the vast majority of investors, and I would say well over 90% of you, are being sold crummy investments through a bank, a brokerage firm, or an insurance agent. That's it. And that's called undersuitability. We're going to talk about that today because I want you to make sure you understand so you can protect your money from being sold junk and protect your financial security and your retirement. There are two standards that the investment community works under. There's called the fiduciary standard and there's called the suitability standard. The fiduciary standard is simple. It means if you're working with a firm that is a true fiduciary, they legally work for you and always have to give you the, the best advice that's best for you. Under the suitability standard, which is what the vast majority of banks, brokerage firms, and insurance companies work under, they only have to sell you investments you're suitable to buy. I'll give you a great example. If you want to buy a loaf of white bread and you show up to the grocery store and there's a $3 moldy loaf of bread, that grocery store can sell you a $3 moldy loaf of bread. That's suitability. But even though you want a wholesome loaf of bread that's $1.50 that just came off the bread truck, that would be fiduciary. So fiduciary is legally working for the client 100% of the time in their best interest. Suitability means only selling you things you're suitable based upon your goals and objectives, and that will get you nowhere, in our opinion, other than crummy investments with high expenses and often lousy performance. When your house is on fire, who do you call? You call the fire department, right? The fire department shows up, they put out the house fire. Folks, there are no fake fire departments, are there? There's only real fire departments and real firemen. Fee only fiduciary. I equate that to always a fireman, always a real advisor. So again, if you're working with a fee-only fiduciary money manager, in my opinion, that's like a fireman. Always a fireman. There are not fake fire departments. Let's look at the other side, though. Suitability. In my opinion, that's an arsonist burning down your retirement and your portfolio. Not an advisor at all. They're really just salesmen. So under suitability, let me give you a great example. You're talking to your buddy, your so-called advisor who's been managing your money supposedly for the last 10 years. He sold you a variable annuity that's got a crazy high expense ratio with lousy performance. Suitability's been met. He sells you a non-traded REIT with lousy performance and high expenses. Suitability's been met. He might sell you three or four or five, six mutual funds with commission and big expense ratios and lousy performance and suitability has been met. Hopefully you're starting to understand. The sad fact is Wall Street firms and brokerage firms, banks and insurance companies all work under some form of suitability. Their goal is manufacture investments. Their so-called advisors have to sell the investments they're required to sell you, the unsuspecting investor. The problem is nobody really wants to talk about and educate you, the investor, between fiduciary and suitability. Resney Wealth Management has done it for years and years, and hopefully you've learned from my shows. There are some firms that do what's called fee-based work. Remember earlier I said fee only? That's the only kind of firm you should ever entrust. Fee-based work, sometimes they're a fireman, 
and sometimes they work under suitability or the arsonist. So let me explain. You're working with a big Wall Street firm. They've got you in a fee-based account. So in a fee-based account, they're supposed to work with you as a fiduciary in your best interest. Now they could have a lot of the conflicts of the suitability part of it, and they have to disclose those. You have to understand them, you probably don't, and then it's game on. They can then sell you a variable annuity, which is definitely under suitability. So you can have sometimes they're a fireman, sometimes an arsonist, and where do those lines cross? Why not be a fireman or a real advisor working in your legal best interest all the time? Again, the only firm you should ever entrust your money to is a fee-only fiduciary. Just because you're paying a fee doesn't mean that's a fee-only fiduciary. Too many investors make this critical mistake. If you go to my website, resneywealth.com, you can download for free. We've got a free report, how to protect your wealth from bad advice. We talk about fiduciary versus suitability more detail, and it's a questionnaire when you're interviewing firms to find out if they're actually lying to you about being a fiduciary or about the conflicts they have or the cost. Go to resneywealth.com, you'll be glad you did. Real advisor or an arsonist, that is a big risk to you, the investor. Entrusting your money to a salesman, your life savings, think about this. You've worked your whole life, you're 65, you're retired, and all of a sudden you show up to one of those free steak dinner seminars with an annuity charlatan who sells you a crummy equity index annuity, and three years into it, you finally realize you've been burned and ripped off. Problem is, that person works under suitability, and you were suitable to buy a crummy equity index annuity. That's the sad fact. This stuff is complicated, and if you don't read the fine print and understand what you're buying, it's buyer beware, folks. So remember, fee only fiduciary. Suitability commission are bad advisors. Fee-based advisors, in our opinion, are also bad because sometimes they're a fireman, sometimes they're an arsonist. Where do those lines cross? The only kind of firm you should entrust your life saving is a fee-only fiduciary money manager. No Wall Street firm, no bank, no insurance company is a fee-only fiduciary. They all work under some form of suitability. Some might have some fee-based accounts on quasi, I call it fiduciary, but none are fee-only fiduciaries. So unfortunately, your best interests are not served 100% of the time. And let me ask you a question. Why would you entrust your money to some of these firms that have been fined billions of dollars, maybe yearly, but certainly over decades, for misdoings against you, the client? It's a sad fact, but too many investors don't understand the difference, but my shows are here to educate you so you can make better decisions around your investments and hopefully protect your financial security and your retirement security. I've got two upcoming workshops. If you wanna learn more about how to avoid bad advice, attend one of my workshops. My current workshops, we're gonna discuss the disturbing facts. Most investors are shocked to learn the true cause of poor investment returns and how to fix it. We're gonna teach you how to grow and protect your wealth from bad advice. If you have any doubts about the advice you're getting, you're questioning the direction of your portfolio, you're starting to learn maybe my person is not really working in my legal best interest, and maybe I've been sold a bunch of junk from my brokerage firm, maybe it's time you came to one of my workshops and learned to protect your wealth for the next 20 or 30 years. Go to resneywealth.com. We've got a workshop in Naples and in Fort Myers coming up. Times and availability are on our website and to sign up is also there. Go there, protect your money. Learn what people should have learned 20, 30 years ago. You've got a lot of time ahead of you folks. You've got a retirement. Don't squander your retirement by continuously having bad advice and being sold investments that are better for that so-called advisor than for your ultimate security. I've got to go to a quick break. Go to resneywealth.com and I will be right back after this. Would you hire an arsonist to put out your house fire? Of course you wouldn't. Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. The sad fact is your advisor is probably burning down your retirement right now and you don't even know it. The only fiduciary versus suitability. Who do you entrust your life savings? A real advisor or an arsonist? Visit ResneyWealth.com for the facts.
Hello, this is Brian Resney. We're back. Of course, we've got an excellent show. As always, we're taking your questions. Send them to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. And folks, make sure you visit our website and sign up for one of our upcoming workshops. Perfect for your pre-retirees and retirees. If you're sick of conflicts, bad advice, and you're finally realizing something's not right with your relationship and your current advisor, attend one of our workshops, or better yet, call our firm for a consultation. We do work with larger portfolios, 500,000 and up. If you'd like to talk to, to us about managing your wealth, call us. We would love to help you get your portfolio back on track. Ken from Fort Myers, Florida. We have two Lincoln Choice variable annuities. I really don't understand the expenses and the annuities have performed poorly the last five years. Invested 250 k now worth 257 We've procrastinated coming to see you for a second opinion. Help, can I get out? Ken, excellent question. Now, as I've always said, your, your Lincoln Choice annuities, I'd have to look at the actual pull up the prospectus and I can really lay out the exact expense ratios of that. But let me talk about a, a variable annuities in general because they're pretty much all the same. Variable annuities in general have high expenses. Your, your return in the last five years from what you're telling me sounds pretty lousy. Chances are it's from lousy investments in the annuity and high expenses in the annuity. High expenses and lousy investments equal a lousy return. You weren't told that by your so-called advisor who sold you the annuity because your so-called advisor only cared about the commission ultimately they were going to earn. What I will say is this. If you, the investor, read the fine print and actually understood the fine print in those annuities, you would never buy an annuity. We get literally dozens of phone calls every single week from people just like you, Ken, who were sold an annuity, they're three, four, five years into it, they're realizing it's not doing what they were promised it was gonna do or what they thought it should do, and they want out. So what we have to do is this, Ken, you gotta look at the expense rate, which we can do if you come in for a consultation, we can pull it up. We wanna look at, is there a surrender penalty? What's option A and option B? What's best for Ken and his net worth and his retirement security? We can lay those out to you. And again, we do manage portfolios 500,000 and larger. I would suggest you call our office, schedule a consultation. Let's see if we can help you get you going in the right direction and out of that expensive annuity. Fred from Naples, Florida. My wife and I, 67, recently retired. Our advisor wants us to put our 700K into an equity index annuity for lifetime income. How can a retire protect themselves from inflation? Will this help? Fred, I'll tell you one way that you can screw your retirement up, and that would be being sold that equity index annuity. Because equity index annuities, you're not going to have any inflation protection. Because once you buy an equity index annuity and you turn that spigot on, uh, for an income, it never goes up. So if you're 67 today, and let's just take a number, let's say they're going to pay you $3,000 a month out of that annuity. Well, in five years, you're going to get $3,000. In 10 years, you're going to get $3,000. The problem is it doesn't go up as inflation goes up. And what you're going to learn after about three or four years, the return of that equity index annuity is also really lousy. Let me give you some, some factual numbers from the hundreds of equity index annuities that I've actually reviewed and studied from people just like you have come into our office for help. The typical equity index annuity, these income for life deals that people get suckered into, in our opinion, it takes you often, often 18 to 20 years to get your own money back. So what I'm saying to you is this. If you put 700000 into that equity index annuity, it's going to take you 18 to 20 years on average to get your own money back. Not a return on your money, your own money back. So in 20 years, if you've gotten your money back, you're 67 today, so by the time you're 87, you've gotten your own money back. And you haven't gone up in income at all because it's never going to go up. You get the same amount the rest of your life. That's a problem. There's better ways to provide income for a retiree if you're trying to be conservative or you're trying to grow. In our opinion, the worst thing you could ever do is be sold an annuity. And in my opinion, equity index annuities are the crummiest of variable annuities combined. Don't do it. Huge mistake. Call our office. Schedule a real appointment, a real consultation with a real firm that legally works for you. And by the way, the person selling you the annuity is no more an advisor than your pet cat or dog. They're a salesman of annuity products for the highest commission. 
Julie from Lehigh Acres, Florida. I am speaking with my insurance agent about a fixed annuity. He says they are safer and guarantee more than my CD at the bank. I'm afraid to lose money. Julie, first off, fixed annuities are not safer than a CD at the bank uh, because a CD at the bank is FDIC insured and the annuity, fixed annuity is only guaranteed by the insurance company itself. So the bottom line is that person is blatantly either clueless or they're lying to you. Uh, also, what I will tell you is this. I will probably guarantee you that you could get a better rate at the bank in a CD, at a two or three year CD, than most of these fixed uh, annuities are paying today. Again, go to the bank and compare the rates and I will pretty much guarantee they'll probably pay better rates than a fixed annuity. Because we're a fiduciary, we want to give you the best advice always, or have to, I should say. So ultimately, fixed annuities, crummy, CD at the bank, insured by FDIC, and probably a better rate of return. Folks, we've got two upcoming workshops. The disturbing facts most investors are shocked to learn. The true cause of poor investment returns and how to fix it. I've done a number of workshops through my years. I will tell you, when retirees and pre-retirees attend one of our workshops, it is probably the first time they tell me they've actually learned something and they actually feel empowered to protect their money from bad investment advice and being sold the proverbial pile of junk, I guess is a great way to put it. We hear that a lot. If you're a retiree, a pre-retiree, you're concerned about the direction of your portfolio, or you're starting to realize you do not have a real advisor at all, maybe you've got one of those arsonists and you're concerned about the advice you're getting, maybe it's time you attend one of our workshops. Go to ResneyWealth.com. We've got a workshop coming up in Naples and in Fort Myers. Times availability are right there on the workshop tab, and you can sign up instantly via our website. And I'll tell you what, you'll be glad you attended because you'll learn to protect yourself from bad investment advice and the charlatans of the world. Bill from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Do you think uh, timeshares are a good idea? Bill, do not buy a timeshare, they're crummy. I can tell you, I've been managing money for over 30 years. While uh, and, and timeshare is not an investment, I often give advice on timeshares with clients who have either been sold those past or ones that are looking at them. They are crummy. If you do the math on a timeshare, they sound really good. The problem is once you get in, you can never get out. And the costs keep going up. The yearly costs keep escalating. You're paying, you never know what the end result's gonna be. You pay a lot of money and ultimately you get dissatisfied in three or four or five years. Then you wanna get rid of it. You can't get rid of it. You still gotta pay monthly association fees and assessments. It's a mess. Timeshares are garbage. Don't buy them. Move on and do something better with your money. Harvey from Naples, Florida. With all the bad press about Facebook, would you say that uh, the outlook for technology companies is not good? Harvey, first off, just because Facebook might have some bad press as of recent, doesn't mean all technology should be painted with the same brush. You have to look at every company individually. What I will say overall, technology. At our firm, we currently own technology in our portfolios. We like technology. We think there's great opportunity in technology. Make sure you do your own homework though. But if you think about it, technology drives a lot of the growth, not only of the US, but of the world. There are major opportunities in the technology field. And I think technology is part of an investment portfolio for somebody who's not a short-term thinker, meaning the next month or next year, but looking at the next three to five, has great opportunity. But I will say, the majority of portfolios that we review that come into our office who are not clients, who want to become a client, often have very little technology holdings at all. And unfortunately, I think that you're really missing the boat by not owning some of that in a portfolio. I've got to take a quick break. Go to ResneyWealth.com. That's ResneyWealth.com. Check out our workshop tabs. Download any of our free groundbreaking reports. And you can also sign up for a consultation with my firm. I'll be right back with more questions after this. Hello, I'm Brian Resney, president of Resney Wealth Management. Over 200 billion in fines for misdoings against you, the client. That's your Wall Street firm. Billions in fines, massive conflicts, boilerplate investing should never be part of your money management relationship. Avoid bad advice and learn how to protect your wealth. Listen to my live radio and TV show on the weekends. Check our website for details.
Hello, this is Brian Resnick. We're back. We're going to be taking more questions. Of course, if you have a question about your portfolio, retirement, Social Security, any financial question you have, send them to Brian Resney at ResneyWealth.com. And of course, our website address is right there on the screen. Go to ResneyWealth.com. Check out our workshop tab. Check out our consultation tab. We do manage larger portfolios of $500,000 and up. So if that sounds like you and you're realizing the advice you're getting is not really advice at all, you're concerned about the direction of your portfolio, you're looking for real advice and real money management, it's time you looked at Resney Wealth Management. Do a little research. Visit our site. Download reports. Become educated empowered, protect your wealth from Wall Street firms, banks, and insurance companies. Dana from Michigan. I was tempted multiple times in re recent weeks to jump ship on stocks. I'm nervous, what do you think? Dana, if you have market volatility, by the way, whether it's the stock market or any of the investment markets, that always makes people nervous. If you've got too much volatility, maybe you need to reduce your exposure to equities or stocks. Um, but if you're, if you're nervous all the time, regardless if your money's going up or down, maybe you're not invested properly at all. What I will say is this, just because you have market volatility doesn't mean you should jump out of something. But if it bothers you so much that it doesn't allow you to stay invested properly for the next three to five years, then you're probably not invested correctly at all. And that's what I often find. We have a lot of people that will call our office, but they're maybe more emotional investors. They're not long-term thinkers. They're, they're, they're concerned every time things go up and down three or four percentage points, they get nervous. Those are not investors that are probably going to be successful long term because they're going to sell at the bottom. They're going to want to buy when things are all rosy again. We see these calls a lot. I get these questions a lot on my TV and radio show. So maybe, again, you're not properly invested. Maybe the advice you're getting is not proper. Maybe the person you're working with is not communicating with you on the education process, on volatility, and maybe that's part of the issue. You can always call our firm for a consultation. If you do meet our client minimum, we'd love to talk to you. Go to ResneyWealth.com for not only our phone number, but also more information about our firm. Upcoming workshops, folks. Just like my last caller, if you're concerned about your portfolio, the direction, the disturbing facts most investors are shocked to learn. And I will tell you, we get so many comments from people that attend our workshops, they should have learned this 20 or 30 years ago. We teach you things you never knew that you should have learned. But again, if you're 65 or 70, if you learn them now, you've got a long time ahead of you, in our opinion, to improve what you're doing. Stop making bad decisions. Stop being sold crummy investments. We're going to teach you how to protect your wealth from bad advice. Go to ResneyWealth.com. We've got a location not only in Fort Myers, but in Naples for times availability and the sign up. You'll be glad you attended one of our workshops. David from Naples, Florida. I've started listening to your show recently. I'm 35 in wealth accumulation stage of my life. I am a very long term at this point and I don't care much about a recession booms or busts relative to my investment strategy. Should I be, I guess is what you're asking. David, you should be, regardless if you're 35 or you're 85. Every investor should have a risk management strategy for recessions. This is typically what happens though. I've been managing money for over 30 years. What I will say is this, most investors will basically buy investments, they sit in the portfolio, and they basically sit in the portfolio. Even when things need to be changed or shaken up, they sit in the portfolio. There, there's not appropriate change, in our opinion, when changes do. Now, while there's normal volatility, maybe you should be making no changes, which is often the case, but when the economy gets overheated and it gets overexpanded and starts to roll over to recession, then at that point, you should be concerned whether you're 35 or 85. You should start getting more defensive. So again, your portfolio and your strategy should be a fluid instrument, flexible. That doesn't mean you're making changes often, but when a change needs to be made because the economic conditions are changing or an investment you bought five years ago is no longer appropriate, why would you own something that should not be in the portfolio that may go down 30, 40, 50%? That is wrong. You should be concerned about recessions. Risk management, in our opinion, is a highly important part of money management, and most investors don't have the strategy for the next recession. Michael from Naples, Florida. What is your opinion on cybersecurity sector or investments around technology? Michael, that's an excellent question. I talked about technology a little bit earlier. 
I like cybersecurity. I like technology. I think it's going to be a driving force, not only of the U.S. economy, but the world economies for years to come. Generally speaking, most investors have very little invested in technology. That's what we see when people come in. And I think that should be a healthy part of your portfolio. You could easily buy a sector that invests primarily in cybersecurity or technology as a whole. And, and having 5 to 10% in technology-related uh, stocks to me is, is definitely worth it and would be well within a reasonable uh, level of risk compared to the overall market, in our opinion. Larry from Punta Gorda, Florida. Buy the dip, is that something you believe in? Larry, this is how I believe in buying the dip. So let's say you're in 2018, we had that volatility at the end of the year, if you probably remember, the market had like say a 10 or 12% pullback dip. The economy is still doing good. We, see, we saw no signs of recession. Yes, we would be buying the dip. If, if we had a dip, and also we're starting to get an economy that's slowing down and rolling over in a recession, we would not buy the dip. So we buy the dip, if it's a normal inter-year volatility and we feel there's great opportunity fundamentally for things to come back and go higher, we would buy the dip. If we're at the point where we're getting one of these short-term pullbacks because we're starting to enter a slowdown in the economy and recession, I would not buy the dip. Make sure you understand the difference. Too often investors uh, invest their money haphazardly without a strategy. Remember, it's how the economy grows if the economy is growing, there's a great opportunity for corporations to make more earnings, which has a chance for their stocks then to go up. If the economy is not growing and rolling over, companies are going to make less money, and there's a good likelihood those stocks are going to drop a lot. So how the economy is doing, whether we're in a recession or not, is going to be vitally important for your portfolio. Folks, I'm out of time. Resdy Wealth Management. Real advice, real money management, none of the conflicts or shenanigans of brokerage firms, banks, and annuity salespeople. My advice, never settle for bad advice. Pick up the phone, call my firm today. We manage larger portfolios, 500,000 and greater. If you're questioning the direction of your portfolio, if you're questioning the advice you're getting from your Wall Street firm, if you've realized these firms have been fined billions of dollars for, for misdoings against you, the client, pick up the phone. Call Resney Wealth Management. Schedule a consultation. Visit our website, resneywealth.com. Download any of our groundbreaking reports. Sign up to attend one of my educational workshops. The disturbing facts most of you are shocked to learn. Again, go to resneywealth.com. It's up to you to make wise decisions. I'll see you next week.